In the last video for assignment three, we talked about our planning sketches, our rough storyboard sketch, that we really want to have a beginning and a middle and an end, and that we don't want to be too ambitious in terms of like changing settings or having too many character interactions so that we can just focus on that change of state transformation throughout. So mine, I start with a pretty boring blank slate emoji. I found this reference just on Pixabay, this kind of thing. And then a book falls onto it. I'm, the, the work that I'm using that I previously designed, I'll open up in Photo P, is my exercise two custom emoji that I did for Fahrenheit 451. So I'm going to open that up, right? So I have to now kind of deconstruct this so that it only uses the layers that are going to be useful to the animation. And this is called choosing your assets. Assets and animation are all the, the components that are going to make your story. So in the Tim Burton example with Nightmare Before Christmas, it's all the stuff in the suitcases that gives you all the potential for all the character expressions. It's all the bodies that can be moved around into different poses. It's all the, the, the background sets and props that can be interacted with. All of them are saved as separate asset layers that can be turned on and off. I haven't built an asset file yet, so I am going to do that. And the way I'm going to do that is to take the thing that I am using in my animation, open that up, this past project, and I'm going to make it the right size and the right resolution. So all of our animations are going to be eight by eight inches at 100 pixels per inch. So let me actually get to our course. You'll find this all in unit seven, or we can skip right to the assignment by going to assignment three and where we post. So eight by eight inches at 100 pixels per inch. So far, all I have are my sketches, and then I started to collect some assets. And these are the external assets. These are the things that aren't just within my photo P project I already made. So I, I got a lot of, lot of shaped fire clip art from Pixabay. And I even got some smoke reference. I'm not going to use a teacup, but I'm going to use this really subtle smoke, and I can make it more opaque. And I have more basic smoke here. And then, of course, I have all the smoke clouds that I've built here. So in order to build my assets, the first thing to think about always is setting or the environment that this setting, that this story is going to take place in. I don't want to leave it as an empty pixel grid. That's going to make my life a lot harder as I'm moving frames around. So but I do know it needs to be 8 by 8 inches by 100 pixels per inch. So how do I change that? I go to image, image size, and I see, first of all, what my inches are. And my inches are 10 by 14 by 350. So I'm going to resample that, just like we did when we checked our proving ground. Except when we checked our proving ground, we, didn't, we unchecked resample so that we could see what the size would be at different resolutions. So at print resolution, this would be 11 by 16 inches. At screen resolution, 72 pixels per inch. This would be 48 by 68 inches. What I want is to, to resample it and force the resolution to be 100 pixels per inch, just a little bit higher. You can think of it as high def resolution than regular screen resolution. And then I want it to be eight inches, uh, eight inches tall. Okay. So that gave me something like this. If I check the image size again, it shows me that it's 8 inches tall by 100 pixels per inch, but it's only 5.71 inches wide. That's because its proportions were locked. Now what I need to do to make it an 8 inch square without stretching it is I have to go to image canvas size, and I have to change this to inches and make it 8 by 8 growing from the center. Now I've got a square. Now I'm going to use my guides and my ruler to put a box around my 8-inch square. And I don't need 
these planning guides anymore that I was using to make my emoji. So to get rid of guides, you just drag them back to the ruler. And for new guides, you click on the ruler and you drag and drop them out using the move tool. Then you can hover over it. All right, now I need to choose a background. And it can just be solid white pixels. I think that could work well to show off the smoke. But I'm thinking this is kind of a, a library background an interior. So if I just left it white, that would be fine, but people would be thinking of where do you read books anyway. So I'm going to look for like graphic library interior background. And these are weird searches, so I'm not even doing Pixabay because that's too specific for the tags in Pixabay. And I don't need them to be high resolution because this is for animation at screen resolution. But I don't want them to have watermarks on them. So if they come from a stock company like iStock, the chances are to find like the biggest image, it's going to have that kind of watermark on it. Unless I become a new customer with a risk-free trial, I don't want to deal with all that, right? So let's see if I can find one that's reasonable and maybe one that's uh here we go that's vaguely photographic and then i like free pick a lot free pick shows up nicely on google image searches and unfortunately on this one you got all of those damn watermarks but that's okay i'm going to show you how we can get rid of it if we like that. There's this one. Yeah, I just I just don't love all these. But if I get a big view of it, you can see the watermark, but it's really faint there. So what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna try to save it, I'm just gonna do a screen grab of it. and I'll modify it. And I like that one better than this one. Okay, so this is gonna be my background asset. I'm gonna move that in. So what do I do? Well, in PhotoP, I'm at eight by eight inches. It's gonna show as 800 pixels by 800 pixels. I'm gonna bring this in and push it behind everything else. I'm using Command left bracket just to move it behind. And then I'm gonna stretch it. How do I do that? Option Command T. This is going to use all of our compositing skills. And then I can stretch it so much that I don't even really see the watermarks. And then if the watermarks really bug me, because this is all going to get simplified into 256 colors, because that's what GIF animations are, I can always rasterize it. And I could very, very uh, meticulously grab each of these pixels and clone stamp them, fix them, but it's going to be fine. Or I could create my own background. I could even do just a quick texture overlay. So I really like for animations not to be too specific and um, what's the term? Detail oriented. So I might just look for some textured paper. I talk a lot about vector shapes like cutouts of paper, right? So I'm going to do a texture overlay, not of clouds this time, but just of this kind of cloudy paper. I'm going to open the image in a new tab. It's not very big, but that's okay. In fact, it's tiny. But as a texture overlay, this will work because as I stretch it bigger, it's going to give me a nice sense of background and then I can just play with the opacity and use that as just kind of a nice default background. So I have two assets now. I'm going to rasterize them both. I'm 
I'm going to crop it just to make sure I've got all my edges. What you do not want is a blank grid in the background. So if you want just blank white, fill a background layer with white. Edit fill white. And if you find out or you discover there's a, a background you like better and you can modify it, make it your own, go for that. It's also really helpful, especially for backgrounds, for environments, to play with gradations. So if I make a new blank layer and then I use this tool, which is called the gradient tool, which we haven't used before, it's below the eraser, you can pick one of these default gradients. I like the cool to warm gradient. And then if you click on the bar, you can actually change these colors. You can add colors. You can steal them from your setting. You know, you can do a lot. And then you can just drag and drop, and it will paint that gradient. You can even paint it at lower opacities on top of itself. So you can get pretty complex color shapes, right? And then you can layer that as kind of your own texture overlay. And I can maybe sit it, set it at a different mode. That gives that kind of warmth of the interior that I like. So then I'm going to put all three of those layers, I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to put them into their own folder, and I'm going to call this the backdrop. This goes behind the character, behind the thing that I'm going to be telling the story with. I don't need the blank white. I'm not using that, but what I'm telling you is don't use a blank pixel grid. Okay, next, similarly, I need to clean up these assets. I don't need these. I don't need this one. Which vector shapes do I want to keep? That flame seems to be helpful. This white shape seems to be helpful, so let's go from the top back. I don't need this. If I can't see it, I don't need it. I'm going to turn off my backdrop just so I can be sure. Oh, there it is. It's right in the middle. I do need it. But I'm going to combine it with all of the book components. So these are all book components. So I'm going to select them and then go to Layer, Merge Layers. The shortcut is Command-E. So now I'm merging my vectors into assets together. The problem is, look what happened. If I keep them as vector shapes before I merge them, they will all merge into vector shapes. So now it's a merged vector, but a vector can only have one fill color, right? So I lose all of that. So instead, what do I need to do? Before I merge them, I need to right-click and rasterize them. And then I merge them, Command-E. And now I keep all of that, that color variation. There's the smoke. Some of the smoke goes in front of the book. Some of it goes underneath. But this is another part of the book. So how do I merge layers that aren't touching? I hold down Command. It should work. <laughs> To select them but if that doesn't work i'm just going to move it up yeah command worked there but you should be able to there we go select multiples even when they're on different you know not connected just by holding command and then i can hit command e except that those are still vectors right so what do i need to do so that i can control it and it looks the way i want i need to rasterize them first when you merge a raster layer with a, a vector shape layer, it will rasterize everything, but if you have things like layer styles on it, you won't be able to affect how that looks unless you rasterize it first. And so I'm also <laughs> going to do what's called rasterize the layer style. That's the glow that's on the book right there. And then I can merge them. And it's still giving me something I don't want, which is annoying. Why? Oh, because I'm missing this other component. So there's a lot of shapes that build this book. So I'm just going to build them as I can. 
and merge them together.